Hey all, welcome back to the channel. I'm your host Cryptic and today will be the third and final video on the topic of the internal SSD upgrade for the PlayStation 5. Um, I've seen the comments on the last two videos, I've seen the requests and people asking on various other videos other than my own. Uh, people really want to know what are the issues that uh, are arising from using the beta, putting in uh, an SSD that's compatible or not compatible and what issues are people coming up with, what hurdles. Um, I'm hoping to answer those for you guys today and um, yeah, let's just get straight into it. Um, if you are following the specs, so this will be the first one, if you are following the exact specs on the PlayStation 5 blog for the beta testing for the SSDs and you get the Gen 4 SSD that's been outlined in any of my uh, my last two videos, um, you're not going to have any issues. It'll, it'll, it'll work unless the SSD itself is uh, factory uh, defective, you're going to have no issues, you're going to be fine, you're going to be great. Um, if though you're not getting to spec, that's when issues start arising. So the first one being that if you get one with uh, below the sequential read spec of 5.5 gigabytes, what happens? Um, well, I'll dismiss this immediately. Your console doesn't brick at all. Um, what does happen though is it, once you do install, let's say, uh, a Gen 3 drive or an older Gen 4 drive that doesn't reach those 5.5 uh, gigabyte sequential read speeds, um, it still goes through the same process. It, uh, you install it as you do, um, you get to the screen, it does the format, it gives you the, the benchmark that it achieved from, from formatting it for you, and then you start transferring games um, onto it. It lets you launch those PS5 games, um, but in the case of things like the Spider-Man Miles Morales or the upgraded version of the first Spider-Man by Insomniac, um, Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart, Demon Souls, um, on the PlayStation 5, uh, especially Ratchet and Clank, I would say in Demon Souls, uh, you do it. They do utilize the SD internal SSD speeds um, a lot more vigorously than other games because you got to realize. So far, we've had um, a lot of cross-gen games, especially with with like Spider-Man, for example, um, and others, right, where they're designed to run anything from a hard drive to an SSD. Um, so there's a lot more leniency in how the game is designed. There's probably a few hidden or smart place loading areas or loading screens that doesn't make it as obvious for for the player. Um, but the games that really re utilize that 5.5 uh, gigabytes of raw of uh, raw data to be pulled immediately um, a second, uh, you, what you'll notice is a lot of artifacting, um, frame rate dips, uh, tearing. You'll notice graphical glitches pop in, etc., because they're not able to draw the data in um, as soon. Uh, as as it would like, as needed, as per how the game was designed. So that's what will happen when you put a lower spec uh, SSD. Um, as time goes on, and a lot of the games are made specifically for the uh, PS5 and the Xbox, right, where they really only run on that SSD with those type of speeds, um, those first party games, those second party games, etc. Um, most likely a lot of uh if you were to use a lower spec drive it's probably just going to crush the game because it's like i can't pull enough data um right now you'll be okay but i'd say in a year or two definitely not those drives won't be good so uh, don't buy them don't use them don't listen to um others who are telling you otherwise they're wrong they're not compatible for a reason and it's the reason why sony's taken eight to nine months to get where they are now with the beta because they're making sure that these drives are working too they're collating all the beta testing information developers insomniac um uh, the, the god of war developers the horizon zero dawn develop all of them right they're all testing all the sony studios the second party and third party who have the dev kits who are trialing out the ssds they're collating all the information to make sure that when the time comes that they make a compatible list of drives with the right uh, sequential reads that they're going to work for you guys with no no issues whatsoever um that's why it's taking so long none of the drives up until now could achieve 5.5 gigabytes or more um of transfer speeds uh the xbox series um memory card uh it's in australia here it's between 20 to 50 dollars more for one terabyte of that compared to a compatible ps5 uh, expansion ssd um, again it depends on your region some are uh, they're about equal par in price maybe you can get the um, xbox ssd maybe a few dollars cheaper but here typically in australia they are dearer um, and you are paying more for a lower spec drive right but yes it's compatible with this respective console but you're paying more for older tech or um, not as good tech um, which is why proprietary memory isn't as good um, 
having the option to use the memory card you want, the SSD you want, um, within reason, right, within specification, but you have multiple manufacturers that are vying for your dollar, you're going to get a better value to storage, to performance compared to something that's proprietary and you have no choice in. Um, so I'm glad that if it's at least taken, you know, eight to nine months, they get it right and you're saving money off the bat. Yes, they are expensive compared to the console, but that's what happens when you're on the bleeding edge of technology. You pay a bit more. If you don't need it, use an external for now and, you know, when they drop in price, which they will, and they already started, they already have in, in some cases on like the 980 or um, it's even the SN850, I think has dropped a, a, a little bit in price. Um, you will save money down the line. Um, the second issue, thermals. Um, with the thermals, uh, people have decided that they'd say, hey, you guys don't need to run it with um, a heat sink. You can run it without a heat sink. It'll be fine. Wrong. The issue with the heat sink now and um, heat sinks that aren't mounted correctly. So I'm going to bundle these in because they end up having the same issue. Um, the drives run in excess of 60 degrees Celsius, um, all the way between 60 degrees Celsius and 90, causing thermal throttling and shutting down at the console when you don't have a proper heat sink. Um, not all drives. Um, the SN850, which is probably one of the hottest, probably along with the Fire Cuda, because the more speed you can achieve, the hotter you get. But the SN850 with its controller tends to run hotter than equivalent drives like the Aorus, a 7000S, and the uh, Samsung 980 Pro. Um, it's running a lot hotter. Uh, people have tried it with uh, the without the uh, heatsink on and doing a thermal reading and doing uh, 500 gigabyte, 200 gigabyte uh, over five plus minutes of transfers. It's overheating. You're getting an overheat warning pop up on the PlayStation. Fans will ramp up and then it'll shut down. You got to understand, even on PCs, um, it's recommended that, especially with the Gen 4 drives, that you run it with a heatsink because they run so hot. You got to understand, electricity is running through these chip modules at a faster and faster rate, which generates more and more heat, which then requires cooling. Um, yes, some chips run better when they are slightly hotter, but not all. Some the controller is better when it's uh, cooler. The memory can be a little bit hotter. They run more optimum at between you know 30 to 50, uh, 30 to 50 degrees, not really over. Um, so people who are running it without the heat sinks, yes, their consoles are confirmed to be shutting down, overheating because of that. They're generating too much heat. Uh, two, uh, the SN850. A couple have reported that they the ones who've bought the um, drive with the factory WD heatsink um, is coming not mounted properly. So if, I'll throw up a picture here on, on screen of, of what's happening exactly. But you've got the heatsink and the thermal pads. Um, again, thermal pads on their own don't dissipate any heat. They're a transfer medium to allow it to get to the heatsink more efficiently, which then transfers the heat away. So you can't run these things with just thermal pads as well. I've seen that pop up and that's completely wrong. Um, but you'll notice there's a gap there between the heat sink and the and, and the thermal pads. Um, for some reason, they're not mounted correctly, so therefore heat is not dissipating properly. So too much heat is building up and causing overheating to happen, right? So a lot of people have realized that it's actually better to buy that drive with the non-heat sink version, which is also significantly cheaper. In some cases, $100 cheaper, um, especially here in Australia. Um, and getting your own uh, screw mounted uh, heat sink and placing that on correctly with the thermal pads installed and installing that into your PlayStation 5 with no issues there. Um, it seems like the SN850's heat sink is a bit of a hit and miss. I would say that would be the only drive, if that's the one that you're interested in, get it without the heat sink and buy a compatible fin design heat sink to go on it that's screw mounted not rubber mounted and you'll be good um because yeah uh, like anything it overheats even on pcs you will understand there's fans that are dedicated to um uh keep uh, vrm modules and memory modules cool um there's hot positive and negative airflow uh heat sinks on the ssd modules etc so it's not like oh the ps5 screwed up you need a um a heat sink it's so complicated it's not you've seen in my previous video it's super easy to install them right um so yeah the third main issue that tends to uh i guess come up is what happens if you don't have the uh expansion tray cover on it how about if you just leave it off you gotta realize the way it's designed on the playstation 5 is when you put that cover off there's two holes on the side which i said hey if you're finding it hard to remove 
um, the expansion slot cover used uh, those two holes I'll pry it open because it could feel like it's stuck on there right because the first time pulling it off um, a lot of with those uh, that's where uh, the hot air is being pulled out you got to understand the um, the fan that's in the PlayStation 5 pulls in fresh air and pulls out hot air so it's a two-way fan it's awesome right so what happens is you've got the air pressure for the main console dissipating heat you've got that then expansion drive cover that's also another thermal transfer right so it's going from the heat sink to uh, out the holes and out of that cover as well right to transfer the heat which is then being pulled out i know people have said oh you can use a far higher bigger um heat sink that exceeds the dimensions that sony's provided and it'll be fine no um overheating issues have happened again or shutdown issues because um just the sensors are going crazy in the playstation 5 that hey what's going on it's hot here it's hot there that this shouldn't be happening and we'll shut down don't do that get the just follow the specs um yes you might get better cooling on the um on the ssd itself um it will, those type of heat sinks are more designed for pcs not not for consoles um you don't really need that um like you'll see I'll, I'll throw up some some photos throughout this showing people who've put on custom heat uh sinks on them that are within spec and you'll realize that the heat dissipation is more than adequate um to run these drives in the playstation 5 and you don't need some monstrous tower of a heat sink to get it done it's just not the case at all um but yeah those those are the main issues that people have come across and as you, like i said it's more people going outside of spec um of what's required it's like you know if you were to put a ps2 memory card into your xbox series console it's not going to fit it's not going to work there's an issue right there um again i know the argument people saying hey it's just easier with the xbox it's plug and play done i get that but you're paying more for that um, you're paying more for proprietary i know microsoft and the xbox team did say oh they're promising that they're going to get other manufacturers on board and they'll be price competitive and all that but recently uh, the xbox division has backflipped on a lot of stuff um even when it came to updates for uh games that were multi-platform that are now acquired under microsoft the new updates have been available only on the xbox side not on pc or on the um playstation and they promised they wouldn't do things like that but they have like anything whether it be sony or microsoft xbox whoever playstation right don't believe a single thing they say until they actually do something base them on their actions not their words because they could say something today and backflip in an hour or tomorrow doesn't mean anything unless they actually do it unless they have it down in writing it doesn't count for anything um so at the moment i say that the ps5 expansion drives are awesome um they're working great just follow the spec i've got two other videos on it that go through how to install them what drives are compatible and what specifications you need to follow with all the articles linked of where you need to go where you need to buy etc and yeah when the beta finishes it's out for everyone if you're one of those guys that wants to expand their storage i think you're gonna be very happy with the with, with the solution especially with the money you're gonna save even buying them now if any of you are planning to buy them now you're saving a little bit of money compared to having a proprietary um, memory system where even if you wait you'll be saving it even more so to those who are patient you'll be saving the most money and it'll be great um but yeah th those three are the main things um follow the spec don't go below spec then you won't get graphical glitches or game crashes um who always run a heat sink right and um three um yeah just just follow the specs it's it's, it's really that easy um but yeah any questions any comments feel free to post them below um if you guys found this video informative and helpful and answered a few uh, hopefully most of your questions hit that thumbs up share the video and subscribe if you haven't subscribed um i'm not sure what the next videos will be but uh i'm sure i'll come up with something um there's a lot more to talk about than just uh the ps5 internal ssd that's for sure anyway guys thanks for watching i'll catch you in the next one